often hear developers say that first they'll build something and then they'll make it look good afterwards. Well, that's just not how it works. Because if you're building something, as soon as you put an object on the screen, you're starting to design. So it makes sense that the more you know about design, the more intentional you are with your design decisions, the better solutions and the better looking solutions you'll be able to build. Today, I wanna to dispel some of the most common misconceptions you might have about design that could be holding you back. First of all, let me introduce myself. I'm Alexis Allen, and I'm the president and lead design engineer at Hyperspace Data Solutions in Toronto, Canada. We do custom software design and development for a range of clients specializing in creating awesome UI and UX design using the FileMaker Pro platform. I'm also the founder of fmdesignuniversity.com. It's a place for FileMaker developers to learn more about design. I have articles and courses about FileMaker design and I really hope you'll check it out. All right, let's get started. Myth number one. The first myth is that design is primarily about making things look nice. Like I said in the introduction, I often hear developers say that first they'll build it and then they'll make it look pretty, but you can't really separate form and function and design is not simply about making things look pretty. First of all, pretty is highly subjective because everyone has different opinions about what looks good. Pretty doesn't help the users achieve their goals and pretty doesn't take the user's experience and workflow into account. We tend to treat design like putting the icing on a cake, but really it's more like making the cake itself. Before you start, you have to make some decisions like what kind of cake are you gonna make? My son is gluten-free, so if I wanna bake him a cake, I need to know ahead of time that I need to use gluten-free flour. I can't go back and change it afterwards. The designer Victor Papanek was a strong advocate of socially and ecologically responsible design of products and tools. And he said, design is the conscious and intuitive effort to impose meaningful order. When we're designing, what we're really doing is organizing the information in such a way that it can be managed because our clients encounter complex business problems all the time, and hopefully we wanna solve their problems and not make them worse. Let's look at an example. I recently built an app for a client who submits applications for guest worker visas from the US government for its clients. It's a long, complex process with a large amount of detailed information gathering, lots of documents to manage and forms to fill out on external websites. And it all has to be as accurate as possible. It can take months for a job to go through the complete process. And each account manager takes on about 40 to 50 jobs. So for this client, design really needs to solve the problem. How can the solution be organized to make it easy for the user to manage a large number of detailed pieces of information? The first thing I did was to provide a dashboard overview with filters that allow the user to focus on a specific job or set of jobs. I use the concept of progressive disclosure where the most important information is shown first and the user can drill down to more levels of detail if they need to. Finally, I implemented an edit in card model so that large amounts of information can be compressed when the user's reading it, but more space is provided when they're editing. And obviously we want the solution to look nice too, but as you know, that's not the primary purpose of design. So here's your first reality check. Design is a response to a clear business challenge. Fundamentally, it's about solving problems. And when we only focus on the looks, we can miss delivering important functionality. Myth number two, design only adds more cost to the project. I think this myth is more common when design isn't valued as part of the development process. You may not have factored in time for doing detailed design when you first estimated the project, or you may not be confident in your design abilities, so you think it'll take you significantly more time to quote unquote do the design. 
But let's look at this another way. The better designed a thing is, the more valuable it is. At a nice restaurant, for instance, you're going to pay more for a beautifully presented dessert than if you went to a fast food joint. But the restaurant knows that customers value the care and effort that went into making that fancy dessert. Otherwise, they wouldn't be able to charge more for it. Because good design is good business, improving your design skills is actually an investment in your own success. You'll provide your clients more value with a well-designed rather than a poorly designed product. It's a matter of adjusting your expectations a bit though about what you're going to produce and at what level because you're not going to become an expert overnight. But you can always improve at integrating design into your development process. Back to our case study for a moment. A big problem with the way the legacy system had been designed was that it wasn't easy for an account manager to see an overview of everything assigned to them. The dashboard is designed to bring important information all together. So the account managers have access to their notes, their tasks, their documents from this view, and they can dive further into the job if they want more specific information. They also have this in-app notification and reminder system they can use to keep up to date with what's going on and they can stay more organized. Ultimately, it's super useful because it just saves so much time from clicking around here and there to get various pieces of information. The time savings of this one module alone will more than make up for the extra development time. Your reality check is that Design is an investment that adds value. And once you make design a part of your development process, you'll start to deliver more value to your clients. This brings me to the next myth, that clients won't pay for design. So a big concern about adding design time is that clients just won't pay for the added cost. Well, as we said in myth number two, design is really an investment and good clients reward quality and craftsmanship. But in return, they expect it to be worth their investment in the long run. But design adds value faster than it adds costs. So a solution that's well designed is valuable to your client because it helps them be more valuable to their clients. They recognize that using design to solve problems will actually help them in the long run and having a solution with a great user experience helps their users be more efficient and more effective in their jobs. And that's what clients are paying for. In our case study example, a priority was to enable users to collect good information the first time. And the document collection system brings all their many documents together into one place so that the information isn't scattered across email, their personal computer, uh, file servers, and finally, they want their account managers to actually start investing more time in building relationships with their clients and coworkers and less time doing busy work because that's where the real value is. Your reality check is that clients will pay for good design that makes their business more profitable. Since a poorly designed product will erode their bottom line in the end, Good clients recognize that paying for design will ultimately return their investment. Myth number four. This project doesn't need design, like the users will figure out for themselves. All right, so what you're going to end up with is something like this, because every project needs design. The alternative to good design is always bad design. There is no such thing as no design. And that's because anything you create can be said to have been designed. You designed it. The question is, can you afford not to create the best design you possibly can? The real test of good design is this one. Is the process clear to someone who's familiar with the content, but unfamiliar with the design? So getting back to our example, training new account managers is a huge investment for this client. And having a design that can guide new users through the process is really valuable. So we made sure that there's a clear visual hierarchy that organizes all the various related entities. So it's clear what goes with what. There are field validation checks 
that make sure that mandatory fields are not left empty so that there's no gaps in the information that are discovered later. And finally, we have popovers to provide customized advice for proofing their own work so that they don't have to send everything to another person and uh, have that other person be the bottleneck in the process. The idea is to use the design to make it clear what things mean and what's the next step and to support the business process as it's going along. So here's your reality check. Every project has design. The question is whether it will be good design. Since design consists of the choices you make, you should really make the best choices you can. I can guarantee you that an absence of design will not improve the quality of your finished product. Myth number five, design has to be creative and original. Classics are classic for a reason. You don't need to invent something new in order to please your users. In fact, you'll probably confuse them more by introducing something unique and unfamiliar. As this quote says, don't try to be original, just try to be good. In our case study, we purposely used familiar objects to help the user experience. As much as possible, we want to remain consistent so the user doesn't get confused. For instance, the card windows follow all the same pattern. And we use the same terminology such as the word finalize to mean the same thing throughout the business process. This helps users to learn and use a system quickly and easily. So your reality check is that you don't have to reinvent the wheel. You're building something that works, not a work of art. So you don't need to get too creative. Myth number six, I can't learn how to design. Well, if you're a long time developer, I'm guessing you spend a lot of time practicing development. It's natural for us to follow what we're interested in and spend less time doing other things. But just because you haven't practiced design, it doesn't mean that you can't develop those skills at all. What you need is just a little curiosity and some motivation. Remember that everyone starts somewhere, even if at first it's basic, like making a cake from a box. When you're first starting to learn design, allow yourself to be a beginner. No one starts off being excellent. By the way, I really tried to find out who Wendy Flynn is and I couldn't, so I have no idea who she is, but I still love this quote. Don't judge yourself too much while you're learning. It's okay if you don't know the answers right away. The best advice is to experiment and try different things to see how they work out. And also, an important thing is to learn the language of design, just as you probably once had to learn the language of scripting. It will help you to understand and communicate your design ideas better if you're able to speak the language of design. If you can learn about things like visual hierarchy, which we've already talked about a little bit, white space, design patterns, mental models, these kinds of concepts will help you to communicate better about design. You don't need to be an artist, but if you understand these concepts, it will help you make better design decisions more quickly. And it'll also allow you to speak with your clients more effectively about design and get better feedback from them about what is and isn't working. So much of what we do is communication, and that's really invaluable. Also, if possible, seek out the work of other developers because seeing how other people are solving the same problems you are can be really eye-opening. Again, you don't have to reinvent the wheel. So the reality check is that everyone can improve their design knowledge and skill. I really believe that everyone can at least get better at design. It requires some motivation and curiosity to know more about design concepts and how to apply them. But just remember that nobody is expecting you to become an expert overnight. So take your time, learn as much as you can. All right, here's our last myth. Myth number seven, design is one and done. What I mean by that is that you just do it once and then you don't ever have to do it again. But that's just not true. Design is not something that you just do once. You'll always be refining your design. Just like making cupcakes, you can experiment with different flavors, different colors, different toppings over the same basic mix. With design, you're always adding a little bit here, solving a new problem there, 
discovering something you didn't know before. It just doesn't end. Everything evolves and the design can evolve with it. Neville Brody is an English graphic designer who's designed record covers for Depeche Mode and others. He said, digital design is like painting, except the paint never dries. And that's because there are always new problems to solve and our work isn't static. The best approach to design is an iterative one, just like in developing. That means doing it over and over again, discovering new problems and then solving them. For example, the notifications and reminders widget we built for this system were a pretty late addition. We only discovered they were needed after we worked through some of the other areas first, and it became clear that there was a new problem to solve, which was, how will users know that a job is ready to be built, for instance? And even though it wasn't a problem we were aware of right at the beginning, we realized there was an opportunity to make it even easier for users to manage their jobs and actually just know what's going on in the system. Now that it's built, it's one of the parts of the system that the users are most excited about because it solves a huge issue that they've actually always had. So keep your eyes open all throughout your project for opportunities to use design to organize and simplify what you're building. Here's your final reality check. The design is done when there are no longer any problems to solve. And that could be today or tomorrow or five years from now. Thanks for listening today. I hope you enjoyed busting a few myths. I want you to know that when I started out, I didn't know as much about design as I do today. What I had was the curiosity to learn and discover more about how I could unlock the value of design. And now that we've busted these common myths, I invite you to think of yourself as a designer and get curious about how design can benefit you. I bet that you're more creative than you think. Happy designing.